We begin today the Gemara and the Tzadik Beis and Medalev at the Mishnah and the top of the Yom. Zok the Heilige Mishnah, Oichol Poyol Kishos, a worker that he could eat from uh, the produce that he's working with, as we've been learning here in the Mishnayis and in the Gemara and this Pedic, so he can eat a cucumber, a fillip a dinner, even if the value of the cucumber is worth a dinner, and as we'll see, the Chiddush over here is that that cucumber that he's eating is worth more than the wages that he's getting for the, <laughs> he's, he's, he's just, he's eating up this cucumber, it's worth more than what he's getting paid. <laughs> and the same thing also, Kaseves, he can eat a date, but fill it with dinner, and even if the value of this date is a dinner, more than the wages that he's getting paid. Mm. However, Rabbi Loza Chismo Aimeh, Rabbi Loza Chismo says, Lo yeichol payo yeser al schorei. A worker that's eating from the produce while he's working should not eat, may not eat more than what the value of the, the wages of the work itself is. Rashi here brings, we'll see also in the Gemara, Kenaf It says that you can eat in the field, Kenaf What does Kenaf mean? Like your work. Why? Because when a person works, he, he puts his whole soul into it and he even is ready to do things in his work that puts his life at danger. So Kenaf refers to the actual work that he does and the wages that he gets paid for the work. And Kenaf that's how much you could eat. But if you're eating the value of the fruits, of the produce, more than that, that you're not allowed. The Chachamim Matirin. Chachamim say, no, that it is allowed. Similarly, the Chachamim are saying the same thing as the Tanakh, but the Gemara will right away explain this. Aval, however, Malam de Adam. We teach and, and, and show a person, he shouldn't have such a, he shouldn't have such a huge appetite to eat more than the wages that he's even getting paid. And he'll lock the doors in front of him. No one's going to want to hire such a person that is getting paid. And in addition, he goes and eats from the fruits even more than uh, what he's getting paid. The Chachamim is saying the same as the Tanakam. The Tanakam said you can eat kishus and kiseves even with a, a high value, more than his wages. And the Chachamim that says matirim are saying the same thing. Says the Gemara, a few pshatim, but the Gemara explains the difference between the Tanakam and the Chachamim. It could be nayu, the difference is, aval melamdin. The continuation that the Mishnah says that we teach the worker, don't eat that much. No one's going to want to hire you. So the Tanakama less le melamdin. Tanakama holds, we don't teach him this, we don't tell him this. And some say, actually, the Gemara means to say that it's usher actually to tell him this. This is part of the heter of the Torah that he can eat as much as he wants. Don't put any limitations on him. The Rabbanon, Islum Malamdin. The, the Rabbanon, though, say that no, we could and should tell him and explain him this is not good for you. Don't eat this much because no one's going to hire you. It's one shot. Ibai say me, another shot is, Ike benayu de Ravasi. The difference between the Tanakame and the Chachamim in the Mishnah is the point that Ravasi said. Dama Ravasi. Ravasi said, Afilo loy sachray el liftsoir eshkel echot. If a person was hired and his whole job is just to cut off one cluster of grapes, so uh, he can eat up that cluster of grapes itself. So he's cutting it, and the and the work person that he's working for gets nothing. He can eat up even just this itself that he was hired for. <laughs> so uh, it's this point that the Tanakama and Rabbi Yaisi, uh, sorry, the Tanakama and the Chachamim, that is, are arguing about. The Tanakama, the Loshan of the Mishnah was, Eichel Poel Kishus. Kishus, Rashi says, is a Loshan Yachid. It means it's one cucumber. He's hired to cut just this one cucumber, and he can eat it. And then Rabbi Lazar Chisma says that no, he should not eat more than his wages if he's hired for one cucumber, if he's hired to cut more, he should not eat more than what his wages are. And then the Chachamim, Matirin, the Chachamim come to be Matir only in a case where he was hired to eat more. There's going to be a lot more and, there's, and, he's, and he's, when he, after he's eating, he's leaving over for the Balabas. Then he's allowed to eat, but not, uh, not to eat up the whole thing that he was hired for. I think what it continues and brings that Rav Asi also said the halacha that he said in a little bit of a different uh, scenario. Rav Asi, Rav Asi said, Even if, now this worker here that Rav Asi is talking about now, he was hired actually to work all day. He's going to be cutting much more than just one cluster of grapes. But even when, he, if he only cut at this time, he only cut one cluster of grapes, he can eat up that entire cluster of grapes. So now the Gemara explains that Tzricha Ravasi had to say these two different statements here. Again, the first statement Ravasi said was he was only hired for one cluster of grapes. There's nothing more that he's going to be cutting and he could eat that up. Then Ravasi said he's hired to cut a lot and he, now he just cut one, he could eat that one up for himself. So the Gemara explains why did Ravasi say both of these points? If you would only say the first point. 
when he was hired just for one cluster of grapes, that he could eat it. The reason over there, he's saying that he could eat that all up for himself is Mishum Delay Ike Lamesa of the Kale of Shovelabais, because there is nothing else that he's going to be placing into the Kale of the Balabais. So you can't say there's more here that he can give to the Balabais, and then there's something else that he's going to be able to take for himself. There is nothing else that he could take to himself. So the Taita gives him the Hetta to eat. This is the only thing he has to eat. So therefore, over here, he should, he should be allowed to take it. This is the head that the Taita says that he could eat. But if he's working more, he's going to be cutting more grapes during the day. So he's going to put into the cave of the Balabayas and then there'll be later enough for him to take to eat. So maybe in such a case, I would say, what you cut first, first put into the basket to, for the Balabas that you're working for. And only Vahadalechel. Only afterwards could you take to eat from yourself. You can't, you're not allowed to go and take first for yourself, and then only afterwards give for the, bala, the, the fruits into the basket for the bala boss. So maybe over there, not allowed. That's why Avasi says the other statement as well, that when you're cutting, you can take first for yourself. On the other hand, if you would only say the halacha regarding when you're working and cutting a lot of grapes, and you're taking first for yourself, I would think over here that's the halacha you take first for yourself because the afshul lekiyumi besayt lebesayf because you'll be able to fulfill. There'll be more later. You'll take first for yourself, but there'll be more available than to give to the balabas. So even though you're eating, but you're giving your employer also something from from his field of or from his vineyard. But maybe in a case where after you eat these grapes, you were only hired to cut this cluster of grapes. And you didn't get all for yourself. And there'll be nothing left for the Balabas. Maybe here the Tere does not allow you to this extent to eat if there's nothing left for him. So Tzriche, therefore, Ravasi had to say this halacha as well, that if there's just one cluster of grapes you're cutting, you can eat it for yourself. And our third pshat now, the Gemara says, regarding the machloikis of the Tanakam and the Chachamim, or we could say, Ike benayu the Rav. The difference between them is the halacha that Rav said. The Omar Rav, Rav said, Matzasi Megillah Starim Bey Rabchia. I found a scroll that was hidden that, that was by Rabchia, and the Kosov Ban, it said the following. Rashi explains what's this concept of Megillah Starim. You have a few times in Shas. This Megillah Starim was before Teir Shalvapeh was written, because the, 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 um, we learn from the Pasif, we learn this in Mesech the Gittin, that Dvarim Shebich Wal Peh, Iyat HaRashar LeKaisvan, that things that are not Teresh Shebiksav, you're not supposed to write it. So in those times when they didn't write Teresh Shebal Peh, and there was a certain halacha that they were afraid to forget, so they wrote it down and but hid it. Not allowed to, to be used and to be seen, because just to, to be able to remember it, it was written, but it was hidden. And then later on, Rabbi Enoch Kaddish came and said, Eis las Hashem efeirat teresecha, and the uh, Teresh Bapeh was written down. But at that point, it was written and it was hidden. And in there, in this hidden scroll, the Kosov Ba, it said in it, Isi ben Yehuda Aime, Isi ben Yehuda says, Kisavei bekerem reyacha, the Teresh says, you enter into your friend's vineyard. So what do you learn out from this part of the Pasik? Be bias call Adam a customadab. The trade is talking about anybody that's visiting, coming in, and entering into a person's property, that he's allowed to take and eat from the grapes that are there. It's not this whole hetta that we're talking about to eat from the grapes from a person's vineyard. It's not only regarding a worker, <coughs> it's regarding anybody that comes into his property. And that, that's what it said in this hidden scroll. And on this, Vama Rav, Rav said, Lishovak Isi Chaye Lachal Berye. What Isi says is not leave life for anybody. You have a vineyard. Anybody that walks into your vineyard is allowed to go and take and eat. <laughs> so Omer Ravashi, about this statement of, of, uh, of Isi ben Yehuda, Ravashi said, I said this halacha of this Megillah Stodim of Isi ben Yehuda in front of Rav Kahana. And I asked them this. And Om Ali, actually, the Bach, the Bach said, Om Ali, he said to me, what's the, what's the reason why Rav said that you're not leaving life for anybody? Maybe what this refers to is not stam any person that walks into your property. It's a worker. He was talking about a worker, but the worker is not getting paid any wages. He's, he's doing the work for in return for him, him being allowed to eat. And, and as soon as he finishes his suda, the person needs lunch. He doesn't have, he can't pay lunch for lunch. So what does he do? Oh, I'm going to go and uh, cut some grapes for this person and I'll get grapes to eat for myself. That'll be my lunch. The avdavachlo, they work and then they, they eat and then they, they leave. That, so that, but stam, anybody to walk into the property and to go and to eat, that, that uh, the Isi ben Yehuda never meant that. So, so why, why is he saying, not anybody can come in. 
So the Gemara says, still, Rav said, this is something that no one will be able to live with such kind of conditions, because Amali told me, nevertheless, a person would, of course, rather have a worker that he pays and he hires him for the whole day. He works there a whole day and he eats some of the grapes. He's not just coming here for a free lunch or for a lunch in exchange for his work. Even after he finishes eating, he's going to continue working the entire day. How much is he going to be able to eat? He's going to be able to continue eating up his entire grapes the entire day. He can't eat up all the grapes. He's going to eat a little bit, and then he's going to do work the entire day. But on the other hand, to say that anybody that's looking for a lunch and comes in and does some work and then eats lunch, and then someone else needs work and comes in and eats lunch, everybody that comes in is just eating, eating. They can't, the whole day people are coming in and working and eating, working and eating. They're going to eat up most of your, uh, most of your vineyard. So that's why Rav said in this, So again, going back to the Mishnah, the Gemara is saying that this is the difference between the Tanakama and the Chachamim. The Tanakama, when he says that a worker could eat, he says, Echo poil. It's pile. It's only a worker, meaning a worker that's getting hired and paid wages. He's the one that gets uh, fruits. Then the chachamim matirim. The chachamim came to add that that he can eat even more than the value of his wages. And what he meant to say also is that anybody that comes in and eats and gets and, and takes from the from the produce and eats and takes like like Isi ben Yehuda said, even that is also allowed. That's the difference between the tanakame and the chachamim. Iboy Yelohu, the Gemara says, they ask the following Iboy, fundamental Shaila, Benigay, to the whole Heter that the Torah said regarding a poil that he can eat from the, from the produce of the property, the field that he's working in. How do we define this? Do we say, Poil, Mishaloi, Hu Eichel? The worker that's eating, what he's eating is his. What does it mean that it's his? So Rashi explains what this means is he's getting paid schar, the wages. The fact that the Torah says that he also can eat, that's the Torah adding. As an additional pay to his wages. It's, it's, it's sort of a, like, the, yeah. the Tate is saying it's an additional payment. And so therefore, it's, it's like, just like the payment of the money is his, he's paid it by his, and he can do with it whatever he wants, as I was going to explain. Or no, it's not an added on thing to his wages. It's not his. It's a gift that the Torah is giving him. Just like you have the different matnas the Torah gives a gift you can take from Leket, Shikha, Peya. Here, this is a gift that the Torah is giving him the rights to eat. That's how the gift is defined. The Torah is giving you the rights to eat. That's it. So the Gemara explains, what's the difference? If a person says, the, the amount of fruits that I would eat, uh, give it instead of me, give it to my wife or my children to eat. If you say that this is an add-on to his wages, so then you have It's his, just like any other payment. So then, yeah, we can give it to his children instead of himself. But if you're saying it's a gift from heaven, it's not his. The Torah is giving him the permission and a gift to eat. If so, so then it's for himself, the Torah gives him that he can eat. But to, to say that it's mine now and then instead of me, give it to my wife and children to eat, that is not allowed. My, so what's the Allah? That's the Shaila here. So Toshima, the Gemara says, let's try to see if you bring a raya from what it says in our Mishnah. The Mishnah said, A person can eat a cucumber, which has a high value, and a keseves, a date, a filibid dinner, that has a high value of a dinner. And the point of the Mishnah was, as we saw before, even if what you're eating is more than what you're getting paid, you're still allowed. So the Gemara says, let's try to understand what's behind, what's the logic of this, that you allow a person to eat even more than what the value is. Now, if you're going to say that this is his that he's eating, meaning it's an add-on to his wages, if so, does it make sense to say that Again, sorry, it goes together, sorry. If you, does it make sense to say He's getting hired for the payment of a danke, which is a small coin. And he's able to eat a value of money that's much more than the wages that he's getting paid. Does that make sense? That this is an add-on to his wages. So, so, so therefore, the Gemara think that Mestamot, this is a gift from heaven. David is giving a gift from heaven and you can eat as long as you're eating. You can't give it away to anyone else. If you're eating, you're allowed to eat as much as you want. So what the Gemara responds to that and says, no, I mean, this, this question you're asking, So you say that this is a gift David is giving you to be allowed to eat. 
Sof, sof, at the end of the day, you have the same question. Oh, you give a danke. This person is getting hired. His wages is just a danke. And ochel bezuzah. And the trade is giving him a gift that he's allowed to eat so much. He's allowed to eat even the value of a zuz. So logically, either way, you're going to have this question. What's the answer here? Rachmane zochile. That this is the the the, the, the trader entitled the worker that he's able to eat as much as he wants, even beyond the the the, the, the wages. Whether you look at it as an add-on to his wages, whether you look at it as a gift from heaven, either way, here this is the chiddush the trader entitled the person for this. Even if you say that it's an add-on to his wages, the trader entitled him to this. Therefore, there's no raya here. Toshima, the Gemara says, let's bring a raya from the Machlaikis in our Mishnah. Rabbi Lazar Chismayim, Rabbi Lazar Chismayim says, no, lo yechol po yeisal A person should not eat the value of fruits more than what his wages are. The Chachamim matirin. However, the Chachamim say that he is allowed. So we see that there's a Machlaikis about this point, whether you should eat so much or not. So the Gemara again <coughs> goes back to a similar point that it said before, that this Machlaikis should be dependent on this, uh, this, this, uh, the Iboye here. My lab don't you think that they're arguing here at this point? Mas of that the one that says that you should not eat more than what your wages are of is because he says that this is a payment, it's an add-on to your payment. So it's more mustava to say that the add-on is not more than the wages itself. But however, the Chachamim in the Mishnah hold, it's a gift from heaven that David says you can eat. And therefore, if it's a gift from heaven, the gift is to eat as much as you want. So even though the Gemara before said it's not necessarily dependent on this, but nevertheless, you can see here from the Gemara that it's more mistaver to say that if it's a gift from heaven, that the Torah is giving you a gift more than your wages, and that if it's an add-on, it's only adding on to your wages and not more than what the wages are. But the Gemara says, no, that's not the understanding of their machlaikis. Loi, the kula alma, mishaloi We could say they both agree that what he's eating is an add-on to his wages. But Vahacha over here, what are they arguing about? Bikinafshacha. The Lashon of the Pasik where it says that you go into the property, Novim Kenafshacha. You eat like your soul, like as much as you want. What does that term kenafshacha mean? That's what they're arguing about. Kenafshacha kamifligi. Marasavar, according to Rabbi Lazar Chisma, that says you can't eat more than the value of your wages. The maximum is like the, the value of what your wages are. Is kenafshacha means bedova shemaisa nafshi olav. It's the work that the person does that he's ri- he risks his life on this. When a person does work in a property, he, wo- he goes up on it, climbs up on the tree, he goes up on a steep <laughs> ramp, he does things that are risky. That's the wages he's being paid for the work. That's the value that he's allowed to eat, but not more than this. But Omar Sovar, the Chachamim hold that the Kanaf is not used for this drasha to give this limitation. Kanaf is used for a completely different drasha, as we had already before in the Gemara. Ma Naf Shechah Chasam To Potter. That just like the owner himself, if he muzzles himself and doesn't eat while he's working, he's Potter. Obviously, he's, he can muzzle himself, he can decide not to eat. Af Poyal Im Chasam To Potter. You're supposed to let him eat, but if you muzzle and you don't allow your worker to eat, you're going to be potter. What this means is you're not over on a lav. Unlike by a shayr, by a if you don't allow the animal to eat, you're over on a lav. By the worker, if you don't allow him to eat, you're not over on the lav. That's what the kanaf shecha is coming to teach. So we have no source from this kanaf shecha to say that you're not allowed to eat more than the value of your work. Toshima, let's bring it out from another. Bryce said, says, Nazir Sha'omar Tnul Ishtoi Ubanov. A Nazir, so he's working in a vineyard, and he can't eat from the grapes. So he says, you know what, if I can't eat, but the Torah gives me a hatha to eat, instead, give it to eat to my wife and children. We don't listen to him. So, so here we have a clear dialogue. If you're going to say it's an add-on to his wages, why don't we listen to him? It's, it's part of his wages, and he can give it away to his wife and children. It's the Gemara, Hossam over there, it's a whole different thing. There it's Midra Bonon that they uh, gave him a knas, they don't want this Nazir to work in the vineyard. Bishom, because Leich, Leich, Omrin, Nazira, you tell a Nazir, go away from a vineyard, Sechar, Sechar, Lekarma, go around the, the vineyard, Leich, Sikraf, don't come close. They didn't want a, a Nazir to work in the vineyard and then take the, the, the grapes and give to his children. Or to his wife. So therefore, he's not, he's, he's, this is to disincentify him from, from com, coming to, to, to work in this vineyard. But really, mitzad, the, the, the din of eating, he, sh- he should be allowed to give uh, to his wife and children. Tashima, I think what it says, there's another b'raisa though that says, Poyl, here it doesn't say nazir. Here it says a worker. Sha'amat nul ishti yabanai, give from what I'm working here in the vineyard to, to feed to my wife and children. Ain't shame, we don't listen to him. 
So again, here we see clearly, if you're going to say that what he's eating is his, why don't we give it to his wife and children? This belongs to him. And says the Gemara, again, my pile over here, even though it didn't say it's a Nazir, but what kind of a work are we talking about? Nazir. We're talking about a pile that is a Nazir. And therefore, as we said before, that even though he's allowed to work and take it for his children, but nevertheless, the Chachamim said that we don't want him to be able to take it for his children, so that he should stay away from this vineyard and not to work here. We have a b'raiser that points out the halacha regarding a nazir, and then we have another b'raiser that talks about a poil. So it seems like the poil, this b'raiser is specifically saying that we're talking about a worker that's not a nazir, and still he can't take from the grapes and feed to his wife and children. So the Gemara answers, that's not a question. Midi Gabi Hadodi Tanyan. Were these two Braises taught together? That here it says Nazir and here it says Poil. It's two different Braises that were taught completely separately. And you can still say that the Braise that says Poil is also talking about a Nazir. The Gemara brings a third Braise also that says the same thing, basically, but also adds on something here. Toshima Minayin Lepoil Shamat Nulishti Bonea Poil says, Give the, the fruits that I, or the, the, the grapes that I can take. To eat, give it to my wife and children. Shein shaymele, we don't listen to him. Shenema, because the pasuk says, "Val kel yocha loy sitein," that you can eat with your hands, but you don't place it into a basket for yourself. So it's only talking about your keli for yourself, but you can't give to your wife and children. So here you see clearly that it's talking about a pile, and it's bringing a pasuk, and it's saying that he's not allowed to give it to his wife and children. If you would argue and say that this Bryce is also only talking about a Nazir for the reason we said before, because Chacham don't want this person to come near a vineyard. But but if so, the Bryce here adds and brings a Pasik. The Bryce is saying that because it says that don't put it into your Kaili, that means that you can eat with your hands, but you don't give it to your wife and children. So this is not only by a Nazir. So the Gemara says, no. Mishom Lech Lech. So, sorry, this is part, part of the question the Gemara is asking. The Gemara is proving this. Why, why, why is the Braise saying that the source is the Pasik of Akalya Chalesite, Mishum Lech Lech Amrin Ezirahu? It should say the reason is because we tell Anaze, go away from the vineyard. So the Gemara actually says, no, we could still be matrik in this Braise and say, Enachanami, really the real reason we are talking about Anaze, and the real reason why he shouldn't be giving it to his wife and children is because we don't want this person to come and work in this vineyard, but the Braith starts off with the expression of a pile, so Kenosov Lakra, the pile, it brings a Pasuk as an Asmachte of the Pasuk that it says by the pile, by the by any worker, but really it's not talking about any worker, we could still say that any worker, this is an add-on to his wages and he can give it to his wife and children, the real reason why that Braith is saying that he shouldn't do so is because we're talking about a Nazir. Toshima, let's try to bring a eye from another Braise. The Braise says, a seicher, well, this is actually a, a Mishnah. The Mishnah says, a seicher is a poil, liktsa is betainim. A person that hires workers to put out the figs to dry. That's the job. Hareza eichel, he can eat from these figs, upatim and amaiser. And when he eats from these pig, figs, he's, he's potted to give maiser. And the reason is because, as we learned before, maiser, you're only obligated to give once there's a gemar malacha. It's a done, done, finished product. Before the figs are dried, and it's just be, it's being put out, spread out to be, be dried, it's, he's potted from giving out maiser. Giving maiser from it, it's not a gemar malacha yet. Almanas, shoichel, ani, ubonai. If a person makes a condition with his employer, that I'm going to do the work, but not only I'm allowed to eat from it, but also my, my children should be able to eat from it. Or he makes a condition and says that the, the, the amount that I'm allowed to take for myself to eat, instead of me taking it, I'm going to give it to my child to eat in my place. So now, the worker himself can eat and he's going to be a potter from my sir. There's no gemar malacha, so he's potter. But when his son eats, his son is going to eat, but he's going to be chayiv to separate maaser. What's the reason? We had this already before in the gemara because when it comes to a leikayach, when you buy produce, you have to give maaser even if it's not a finished product. So over here, the son that you made a special condition that he's eating, so that's like a buyer. It's that's not part of the uh, the. Uh, conditions of a worker that the Torah says that he's allowed to eat. This is a special condition that you made that you're going to give to the son as well. So that's like the son is buying and getting 
uh, a, a, this from the from the owner. It's like he bought it. Therefore, for that, you're going to be chayiv to separate miser. But the Gemara now asks, if you're going to say that if a person it takes for himself, he's taking an add-on to his wages, it's his, it belongs to him, and he can give it to his son as well. If so, benai am I chayiv? In the second case that the Brayseir says, Brayseir says, "Oishu yochal b'ni bischari," that my son is going to take instead of me. And even on that, the Brayseir says, when he's giving to his son his own rights to eat from the fruits, even there it said that the son has to separate meiser for it. Why? Why does he have to separate meiser? It's yours, and you're giving it into your son in your place. It's not like a buyer. This is part of the add-on of the wages that you get that the tater gave you the rights to take care. So you shouldn't be chayiv and meiser. Ravine, so Ravine answers, Mishum de Mechzik and Mekach. You're right that over here, when the son is taken from you and your place, there is no aspect of a sale here. The son is not considered to be a buyer. He's just getting your wages in the place of the person himself that the Torah gave you. But nevertheless, because it looks like a sale, so the Chachamim said that the son should separate Meiser. Toshema, the Gemara says, let's bring a eye from a Mishnah. This is actually a Mishnah on the next Talmud. Asayichir es apoyal, lasa is beneta vayishaloi. Person hires workers, and the workers are doing work in a, with trees that are planted, and it's the fourth year that the tree is growing. What's the halacha of the tree that grows the fourth year? You're not allowed to eat it where it is. You have to carry the fruits up to the shalayim. So now this worker that's doing the work here in this property is not going to be able to eat from the fruits of this tree. So so the workers can't eat from it. If the, the owner, the employer, did not let his workers know that the property you're doing work in here is with trees, that you won't be able to eat from it at all. So then, So in such a case, the employer is going to have to redeem it for money, like you do with Neta Revai, same like my Sashani, you redeem it and you bring the money to Yerushalayim and then they can eat from the fruits of the tree. <laughs> so the Gemara now asks him this, why, <coughs> why would the employer have to do this? If you're going to say that this, that the worker eats from the produce or from the fruits of the tree, it's not to add on to his wages. It's a gift from heaven that the Ebishter is giving him to, to be able to be allowed to eat. But it's not his at all. It's, just, it's, it's not his to do with it what he wants. It's just a, a gift to eat. If that's the case, why in a case where he didn't let the workers know that this is a property that he won't be able to eat from it, why does he have to then go and redeem to give them the opportunity to eat? It's just a gift. And obviously in a case where it's something which is also to eat because it's net to here the gift just doesn't apply in the first place. So there's no reason why the owner that's hiring them has to make this gift available for him for them. If it's an add-on to the wages, so, so then this is something that you have to make sure it's available for them. The Torah is saying that this, you have to add this to their wages. But if it's just a gift, <laughs> in a case where it's something which is not to revive and it's usr, the gift doesn't apply in the first place. And so the Gemara over there, the reason is, Over here, true, the owner should not make it adin be responsible to, to provide this for them. But because the, the, the workers were still expecting this, they, when they were hired, they were expecting this. So therefore, it looks like it's a mekach tos. So Chachamim said that you should redeem these fruits and give the workers opportunity to be able to eat from it. Okay, so now the Gemara says, let's see if this Svara of Mechzi Kemekechtos, let's see how this plays out now in the continuation of this Mishnah. Aim is safe, uh, in the safe of that Mishnah it says, regarding workers that are hired to do what? Nispar <clears throat> A person has the, uh, the pressed figs that are made into like a cake when they're pressed together. And so what happened with these figs war, they, they separated. <clears throat> and he's hiring workers to press them back together. Or Nispat A person has wine. The wine is in the barrel and it's, it's clogged and closed properly. And this barrel got opened up. It, the, 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 the stopper or the, however you clog it, it got opened up. And now you're hiring someone to, to close it back up again properly. So in both of these cases, the Mishnah says, They're not allowed to eat from the, the figs or for, to drink from the wine. They can't, they can't have an end off from it. Why not? The reason is because this is based on what we learned before. Up until which point is a worker allowed to eat from the produce or the wine that he's working with? Up until when it becomes chayv and meiser. But once it's a gemar malacha, once it's a finished product, and you chayv and meiser for this, they're not allowed to eat from it anymore. So over here, these things that were already pressed together once before, it was already a finished product. 
The fact that it got separated again, it doesn't matter. Since it was a finished product, or as well, the wine knows well. The wine that was in a barrel, it's already all finished. It's ready to give Maisa from it. So if they're doing work with these things that are already Chayiv and Maisa, it's a finished product, they can't eat from it anymore. So here, the mission continues and says, if the owner did not let them know that this was already a finished product, and therefore you won't be able to eat from this. In other words, the worker comes, and he sees these figs that are uh, broken apart, and he thinks that, oh, these are figs that were never made into a cake yet. It's not a finished product. I will be able to eat from this. Or he sees the wine in the barrel, and he thinks that he's going to be able to eat from it. So if he didn't let them know that they're not going to be able to eat from it, ma'aser, so the owner has to separate Maiser from it, um, achilan, and he has to allow them to eat from this. Now, so now the Gemara explains here, why is this? Why should he be allowed, why, why should he have to allow them to eat from this? If you're going to say that this is just a gift from heaven that the Ebishti gave to the workers when they work in the field. Why does he have to separate the Maiser and allow them to eat from it? If you don't take Maiser and it's something that is already Chayev and Maiser, it's an Iser, here the Taita did not allow them to eat from this. Or really, the Mepharshim say that the question the Gemara is asking over here is, it's a gift from heaven, and that gift from heaven is only in a certain time period. After it's a finished product, that gift does not apply, so they should not be allowed to eat from it. It doesn't make a difference if they realize, if they did not realize, what difference does it make? Elamai, the Gemara says, you must say that this is an add-on to their wages. So the fact that they thought that they're going to be able to eat, and now all of a sudden they realize they made a mistake, it's a mekech tos. That, that's the only reason why the owner is going to have to give them to eat. Otherwise, they, 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 he hired them. The whole thing was a mistake. Now, if you'll try to answer like the point that we said before. Here as well is Mishum de Even though you're right, there's no real mistake over here because it's just a gift of heaven and the gift does not apply in this case. But still, it looks like a Mechachtos, meaning this is still something that the workers were expecting to get. And they're not going to end up getting it. So it's a certain disappointment. So because of this, the Chachamim said that you should allow them to eat. So maybe we could apply that same Svar over here regarding these figs and regarding this barrel of wine. So the Gemara says it doesn't apply to the barrel of wine. And the Gemara explains. You can give this answer when it comes here to these figs that got broken apart and you know, you're hiring these workers to put it back together, this cake of figs. This is something that the worker was expecting to be able to eat from it because he thought that these figs were never put together before. So it never was a finished product. He was expecting to eat from it. And now he realizes, ah, he's only putting it back together and he can't eat from it. So then it, it looks like a mekach tos. So, so that we understand why, he's, why the Chachamim said that you should allow him to eat from it. But Ela nispatchu chaviyaisa. But if you're talking here about the wine that's in barrels that was closed properly, Elamaya got unclogged, and now you're hiring them to, to close it up properly again. My Why is there any Mekhtas involved in this? Meida Yoda, the worker should know the itfulu who the maisa that once the wine is already in the barrel, the wine in the barrel is definitely already considered a finished product that's chayiv for maisa. So why does it say over here that if the worker was not, he didn't, he wasn't let know about the fact that he's not going to be able to eat from this, that he, that the worker, the, the the employer has to make sure that he could eat from it? Why? This is not something bechalal that the Torah was mezakeh to him. Amar Rav Sheshe, said Rav Sheshe's answers, Shenispatchu chaviyosav lebar. What happened was this wine that was in this barrel got unclogged. And because of this, the wine was poured in or poured out into, the, into a pit. And now the, the worker is being hired to come do work in the pit. And the worker expects, ah, the wine is still in the pit. I'll probably be able to drink from it because it's still not chayv and meiser. So it, this is still an unfinished product and I'm allowed to eat from it. That's why he was expecting to be able to eat from it. And therefore, even though the truth is that uh, he can't eat from it because it was already in the wine, in the barrel that is, but nevertheless, the Chachamim said that because it's Mechzi Kemekachtos, we could apply that Svar here as well, that he thought he would be able to eat from it. But the Gemara says, is that really the Halacha? Vatanya, we learned in Abraise, Yayin, at what point is wine Chayv and Maiser? When is wine considered to be a finished product that it's Chayv and Maiser? Mishayeri Dubar, when the wine is poured already into the pit. So once it's already poured into the pit, the, oh, the, the worker should know that he's not going to be able to eat from it. It doesn't even look like a Mechachtos. He's not expecting at all to eat from it. So the Gemara answer is not Akiva. This Braisa we quoted before, or the, actually it's a Mishnah here. The Mishnah here is going like Rabbi Kiva's opinion. The Omar Mishi Yikafe. 
Vakiva said that even after you pour the wine into the pit, it's still not considered to be a finished product. You're not chayv and maisa yet. When are you chayv and maisa? <laughs> Mishiyakafa. What does Mishiyakafa mean? When the wine is poured into the pit, there's the sediments that rise to the top and you have to remove them. Only after they are removed, then are you going to be chayv and maisa. So the omrule, so the workers can say, We didn't know that we won't be able to drink from the wine. We thought that this, even yeah, it's the wine that's in the pit, but we thought that we would be able to drink from it. But the Gemara asks on this, but if you see that the wine is already in the pit, you should have the idea that Dilme Makafe, that maybe the sediments on the, that rise to the top were removed already and it's a finished product and you won't be able to eat from it. It's not a Mekach Tos and it doesn't even look like a Mekach Tos. There's no reason you should be disappointed about this. So the one answer is no, but Asra, this is in a place, the Ahu Gavre de Nogid, the one that, that takes the wine out of the pit, the one that, uh, that uh, pour, pours the, the wine from the pit into the barrels, Iu Makafe. He's the one that takes off the sediments. So therefore, if they were hired to take the wine out of the pit, so they thought that the wine in the pit, the sediments are still there, it's not a finished product, and therefore they still can drink from it, and therefore it, isn't a, it is a disappointment for them, and therefore Chachamim said that you should allow them to eat from it. Now, the Gemara brings now another opinion about this. Vahashta, the Tani, Rav Zvid, Bidibay, Rav Haishia. Rav Zvid, by Rav Haishia, taught that regarding at what point is wine chayev and maiser. So he taught that Yayin, Mishiyated, Labayr, Viyakafe. That the first opinion is that wine, the point that it's chayev and maiser is when it's poured into the pit and you remove the sediments. But Rabbi Kiva, but Rabbi Kiva actually said that it's only chayev and maiser at a much later point. Mishiyashla, Bachavius. When it's poured into the barrel, and in the barrel it was sifted and the, the wine was made clear, good wine. That's, that's considered to be a finished product. After it's in the barrel, and he took off the sediments that are in the barrel. So then if so, a filateme shaloi nispatcho chaviyes of leboi. Going back to this price here, we don't have to say that the case here is that he hired a worker and the wine was already in the barrel, but then it got opened up and it was poured back into the pit. It wasn't poured back into the pit. But still, the workers see the wine that's inside this barrel, and it's an open barrel. The workers thought that if it's an open barrel, that means that it probably is not finished yet. So the Omrule, they can say to the owner that hired them, We didn't know that this wine in this barrel was already sifted properly and it's considered to be a finished product. It, the fact that it was open, we thought that it's an open barrel because it wasn't sifted yet. But now the Gemara clarifies this as well. The name Elohu, the owner should tell them, You should have had the idea that if the wine is already in the barrel, maybe it was sifted. Maybe it is a finished product. Why are you so disappointed that you can't eat from this? So the Gemara answers similar to what it said before. The minig in the place was, the wine was poured into the barrel. That was the job of one worker. But then there was another worker that his expertise was to know how to close up the barrel properly. And the ones that used to close the barrels properly, they were the ones that sifted it and, and finished the wine, that it should be clear, good wine. So therefore here, if they were hired to close up the barrel, they thought that probably the wine in this barrel was never sifted properly and therefore they can still eat from it. So the fact that they're not going to be allowed to eat from it is a disappointment for them. As the Gemara says before the Lashon, it's mechzi kemekach tos, and therefore we have to allow them to eat from it. Even if you say that this uh, eating is, is only Mishal Shemayim. So there's no raya from this uh, Mishnah here as well. Okay, the continuation of the Gemara, we'll come to Shem, and we'll leave to, for tomorrow.